Welcome everyone to Vest Interest. This is Shane back for another stock pick of the day video. Today we're going to take a look at one out of the information technology sector. It is September 4th. We are going to look at LAM Research. If you could do me a favor before we get too far in the video, hit that thumbs up button down below if you're a dividend growth investor, if you find any value in this content, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click that subscribe button. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Click that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. We put out these stock pick of the day videos Monday through Thursday whenever the market's open. We did not put one out this past Monday because the market was closed. We take a look at a company stock that's pulled back on the day, see if it is presenting any value. We also do subscriber suggestions or viewer suggestions. I guess I don't even really check that, that you're subscribed, but viewer suggestions. Uh, so if you do uh, make a suggestion on a company that you'd like me to cover, I'll work it into the rotation. And again, one more reason to make sure that notification bell is clicked. And a very special thank you to all the subscribers out there. The channel continues to grow because of people like you. You are awesome. Now, this is the vested interest stock screener. This is how we're going to run through the video here. This criteria is what I use to look at a company on a high level, see if I'm interested in adding it into my watch list, and then doing a deep, deeper dive into the financials of the company. It must meet five of eight. For financial companies like banks or insurance companies, I add in price to book. Now, you can use price to book for any company, but don't use the one rule. For banks, it works fine, one being fair value, anything under one being undervalued, anything over one being overvalued. But for other companies, companies in other sectors like the industrial sector, information technology sector like this one, you would want to compare this company to similar companies in the same sector and in the same space. So for this company, LAM is a manufacturer. Well, actually, they uh, they don't make, well, they do manufacture. LAM Research, they design, manufacture, and refurbish uh, semiconductor processing equipment. So you'd want to compare this to something to like uh, AMAT, uh, applied materials company or somewhere along there and look at their price to book uh, and then then you can use price to book but one would not work for a company like this so again we're going to run through this criteria we'll see where it stacks up at the end let's jump back over to lamb lamb research a history of innovation check them out at www.lamresearch.com that's www.lamresearch.com that is their homepage where i pulled this information from a history of innovation since 1980, LAM Research has played a key role in contributing to extraordinary pace of innovation in the semiconductor industry. That is their bread and butter. That's the industry they serve. Our market leading products and services enable our customers to build smaller, faster, more powerful, and more efficient electronic devices, the kind that are driving the proliferation of technology into our everyday lives. And then if you were to go to their homepage, you could go to this page here and scroll down and go through the history of the company as they grew out. And as I said a minute ago, LAM Research, they design, they manufacture, they refurbish, they do service, and they market the semiconductor processing equipment that other companies are used to using to build their semiconductors out. So they'll work with, uh, you know, a company like Intel, for example, to set up their manufacturing process and then manufacture and design the equipment that they need to do that. Intel. I don't even know if Intel is one of their uh, customers. It's just one of the one I pulled out of because I know they manufacture semiconductors. Now we are talking about LAM Research Corporation, ticker LRCX. The reason we are taking a look at them, down 0.17% on the day. So not a big drop, but a drop nonetheless. They did close up the day at $764.44. 52-week range as low as $574.42, as high as $1,130 per share. So they are floating kind of between that 52 week high and that 52 week low, maybe a tad closer to the 52 week low than the 52 week high, but not within 15%. And this is a significant investment, right? If you could buy fractional shares of this one, that would be the way to go. Uh, because I, I recognize that, you know, not everyone's going to have $764 and 44 cents to buy one share of a company like this, right? So you could buy fractional shares if your brokerage allows you to do that, or you'd have to save up, you know, the money to buy one share. I'm just presenting the the company to see if it's something that you might be interested in now market cap of 99.282 billion a beta of 1.48 so they are more volatile than the overall market and a lot of volatility here you might be able to use that volatility to your advantage taking advantage of pullbacks on this one 
Uh, price to earnings ratio is a little elevated at $26.34 per share, though tech companies typically are. And if they're growing fast enough, they might be justified. That is a little heavier than I like it, but it is what it is. Now, EPS being $29.02, actually higher than the PE, even though the PE is a little elevated in my opinion. That's pretty significant. I really like that. Earnings date, October 16th through October 21st. So tune back in sometime in that window. Uh, they're going to release their earnings. Forward dividend yield is $9.20. Uh, or I'm sorry, forward dividend is $9.20. I believe they're a quarterly payer. We'll see that here in a minute. Uh, dividend yield is low, starting at 1.2%. Again, if you were to maybe uh, capitalize on some of this volatility and wait for them to pull back uh, significantly or a bigger pullback, you might be able to get this yield up closer to 1.5 or 1.6% depending on how far they pulled back, maybe even a little higher. X dividend date is September 17th. So if you were to buy them now, you would be in line for the next dividend. It looks like it pays out on October 1st. And a one-year target estimate, at least according to Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information from, $1,055.12 per share. They don't see it quite getting back to its 52-week high, but pretty close. Now we're going to jump over to here. Uh, if you were to go to the left-hand side and Yahoo Finance, you would find a tab that says to statistics. You go into statistics tabs, you go down to dividends and splits. We're going to look at dividend yield theory to see if this one is potentially undervalued. To do that, we go to their five-year dividend yield average of 1.17%. We compare it to their current 1.2% or over here where it says forward 1.2%, same number. And since that is, this is slightly higher than their five-year dividend yield average, that speaks to undervaluation on this one. Slight undervaluation, uh, similar to what we saw with Chevron yesterday. I mean, this is pretty close to fair value, really, uh, even though slightly undervalued according to dividend yield theory. Now, payout ratio, I like 75% or lower. They're sitting at 27.59, very low. I like that. Gives them a lot of runway to increase that dividend over time, pay down debt, make acquisitions, reinvest back into the company. A uh, lot of room to, to grow there. Now, going down to free cash flow, I like growing free cash flow, flow because typically if a company has growing free cash flow, uh, they can do several things. They can pay down debt, they can make acquisitions, they can rebuy shares, and they can increase the dividend, which is what we want over time. So going back to 2020 here, you can see 2.5 billion in free cash flow, 2023 up to 4.6. Looks like a drop in 2024 down to 4.2. And this is why I don't always like to use trailing 12 months. Uh, looks like the same exact numbers here uh, for the trailing 12 months as reported out you know, in 6-30-2024. Now, I did go back and look here, and it is growing. I'm going to call it growing over four years. And even though if you see here where it looks like 2023 to 2024, it dropped down. Let's go over to the repurchase of capital stock and see 3.8 billion here in 2022, dropped down in 2023. So free cash flow is up, but they repurchased less shares, 2 billion. Now, 2024, repurchase of capital shares is up to 2.8 billion, and that more than covers the little drop here in free cash flow. Uh, and again, I did go back here and look in 2021 numbers. They are growing, so I'm going to give them growing free cash flow on this one. I do like that they're aggressively repurchasing shares as well. Now, jumping over to stockanalysis.com, another site that I go to for information. You pick any sites that you like. I just recommend you visit more than one to make sure the information you're getting is accurate and up to date. And as you can see here, price targets were last updated on August 5th. So this one is about a month old now. Uh, so that's part of the reason that I always recommend more than one source. Again, right, they don't always update these uh, every day, constantly, weekly. Uh, some of them may be outdated, and that's what you want to look for. The 21 stock analysts that have taken a look at this, they call it a strong buy. They have a low estimate of $720, which would be a 12.3% decrease from where it currently sits. Average estimate of $983.19. That would be a 19.75% increase from where it currently sits. And a high estimate of $1,325 would be a 61.39% increase. And if you were to buy them now, you could lock in that, you know, 1.4 or 1.5% dividend yield. Now, statistics here, we're going to jump over to financial efficiency, see how efficiently this company is reinvesting its capital back into itself. To do that, we're going to look at return on equity, ROE, and return on invested capital, ROIC. For both of these metrics, I like 10% or better. As you can see here, return on equity, 45.71%, very high, smoking high, beats the 10% I'm looking for. Return on invested capital, same thing at 19.83%, not as high as return on equity, but still over the 10% I'm looking for. EPS growth forecasted over the next five years, I like 5% or better. They're sitting at 18.25%. Again, beats the metric I'm looking for with very fast revenue growth, double digits at 11.91% forecast as well. Really like the revenue forecast on this one. 
Now, going over to uh, stock analysis, dividend history, you can see here they are a quarterly payer. They say their payout ratio is 31.72. Either way, uh, round, we'll, we'll call it 30%, still under the 75% I'm looking for. And this is another reason I like to look at more than one source, you know, see how the information is conflicting just a little bit. Uh, dividend growth, 15.68%, double digit dividend growth, really like that. 10 years of dividend growth, buyback yield to 2.83%. So they're doing efficiently uh, with their buybacks here. Shareholder yield of 4.02%. They do pay out on the January, April, July, October timeframe. Not a lot of companies do, so I like that they're on an off uh, payout schedule. And 2020 here, March, going back to in time a little bit, you can see they were paying $1.50 in dividends. Looks like in September 2022, they jumped it up to $1.72 and some fractions of a penny. September 2023, up to $2.00. And most recently, they announced the September payment will be $2.30. And I would anticipate their next raise will not be until September of 2025 with the payout in October. Uh, so very nice dividend growth on this one. You know, that's a 30 cents jump up, 15.68% dividend growth. Overall, numbers look very good on this one. Other than, like I said, it's very expensive uh, stock, very expensive price per share on this one. They might do well to do like a stock split, like a two for one or something like that, where they could reduce the people who own the shares would get more shares, double up on their shares, but they could reduce that price per share and maybe get some people more interested in buying into this one. That's, that is one thing that, that companies are looking at whenever they do those stock splits. Now back to the vested interest stock screener. This let's see how this one stacks up. I see a lot of green checks here. Understand the business. There's a check. Growing free cash flow. Yep, there's a check. Growing dividend. Yes, there's a check. Double digits. I really like that. Dividend payout ratio is under 75%. Check there. Uh, dividend yield theory says it's potentially undervalued, though it's pretty close, but still a check there. It is not within 15% of a 52-week low, so no check there. Return on invested capital and return on equity are return on equity, especially, is smoking high, but return on invested capital is twice what I'm looking for, over 10%. Check there. And earnings per share growth at 18% is over the 5% I'm looking for. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of eight. This one is going on my watch list. I would like much more cheaper price. I don't know if we'll ever get it. Uh, so it may never go on my watch list. That's just the nature of, or it may never go in my portfolio. But I am going to throw this one on my watch list. Uh, it is, is an interesting company. And it is a way to play the semiconductor space without owning semiconductor companies own the companies that provide them uh, the equipment that they use to make the semiconductors. Maybe that's a little more uh, in line with what I would want to do. Semiconductors being pretty cyclical. They team boom and bust cycles. Uh, whenever tech kind of runs up, they run up. And maybe being a supplier of different semiconductor equipment is a better play on this one. That I'm just talking out loud, thinking out loud here. Uh, but this may be a one way to play the semiconductor space without owning a semiconductor company. Well, as always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I am always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So let me know what you think of LAM Technologies uh, or LAM Research here. Uh, what do you think of the company? Is it one you're interested in? Is it one in your portfolio? Is it one you're avoiding altogether? Or maybe it's one you're selling. Maybe you've seen a, a big gain in this one and you're taking some profits. Love to hear from you in the comment section down below. And if you have a company you'd like me to take a look at their stock on a day it pulls back, go ahead and drop that in the comment section down below and I'll work it into the rotation. And this is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great week and we will see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. You can read through the rest of this. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm definitely not your financial advisor. Make sure you do your own investigation into any stock before you buy it and understand that there are risks associated and you can lose money.